The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is day three of continuous coverage. This is theCUBE, it's our flagship program. We go out to the advanced extracted cynical noise. I'm John with Stu Miniman. Stu, uh, day three kickoff uh, here inside the Cube. We're trying to extract the signal from the noise. Certainly a lot of noise going on. Certainly a lot of Kool-Aid being passed around. A lot of discussions, we've been breaking it down. We talked to all the thought leaders, uh, executives, vendors, uh, bloggers, uh, podcasters, Stu. So, so uh, a lot of action happening. HP had their event last night. Cisco's here in big presence. Um, the Wall Street Journal news this morning saying that Red Hat is going to block uh, support for anyone other than Red Hat's version of OpenStack. Um, kind of vague, but Wall Street Journal apparently has reviewed some documents, so that's news of, the, of this morning. But you know, I think uh, you know, we're seeing full-on FUD war going on here, too. So, I mean, you know, I mean, that could mean anything. I mean, someone could have gotten a document saying, "Hey, we're not going to support some compatibility issue." So it's unclear what that report says. But what is clear is that OpenStack is obviously booming. Um, the hype is there. The people are working hard. What's your take on all this? Yeah, yeah, John. So for, first of all, you know, we, we've said in, in a lot of ways. You know, it. it, it someone said. It, in many ways that this feels like communism here. Everybody is kind of all together working towards a common cause, um, but you know, when you do get underneath there, there is um, you know, some battles going on. When HP made their announcement uh, you know, last week on Helion, you know, Dell is you know, pouncing on what they're doing. Um, the, you know, the news this morning, uh, it, you know, if it turns out to be true, is a little bit concerning. You know, Red Hat, of course, you know, ha has a great position in open source, um, and you know, from what I've seen, you know, they're, they're very much supporting lots of different clouds. Of course, they're on AWS, they're recently announced uh, supported on Google's cloud, uh, and they're trying to be the leader uh, in OpenStack, but um, they can't not support their customers if they choose other distributions. Uh, th that's just kind of poor behavior in the community. Yeah, I mean, uh, ultimately, OpenStack is about openness, and I think you know having interoperable clouds is a pretty critical thing, and I think one of the things that you start to see here is the movement back to silos, nobody wants that. So I'm really interested in the C, I'm just commenting right now in the crowd chat about this. Um, one is, what are the documents? I mean, I've seen, I mean, I, I, there's always corner cases. I mean, some sort of get someone, you know, you get a document that says, oh, we're not going to support this kind of version of that. There's a lot of issues around total cost of ownership, too, which we talked about yesterday. And ultimately, that is going to be the, the ultimate end game for OpenStack. How much does it cost to run these clouds? And certainly this Red Hat news is suspect at best. Apparently, Wall Street Journal does do a great job in journalism. They do review documents, so I'm not sure they're throwing any haymakers out there that, that hasn't been reviewed. So, so to me, I want to dig into that uh, further until we get more, that's developed story and certainly we will be digging into that. Um, but Stu, let's talk about more going into the OpenStack. So one of the things that we talked about yesterday and certainly we had Red Hat on, we heard what they said, and they're open. They're like, hey, let people bring on their own stuff. We got our stuff and we're going to just continue to execute that. But you know, OpenStack is about the customers and we've been looking for that. We haven't really seen that. And, and so there's also, where is the status of the community? So what's your take on this? Uh, you've been talking about a survey. We were just texting about that and talking about before we came on. What is going on in OpenStack? What are you finding? Yeah, so, so John, we've been talking about that. There's there's lots of different distributions out there, and everybody's uh, you know trying to jockey for their positioning. Uh, the user survey that came out, which uh, the, the foundation does every six months, has has a lot of meaty data. So going through real quick, you know, 1,780 respondents, and 506 of those have deployments. Um, you know, you know, jumping straight to you know what's happening, say in the Linux space, you know, Ubuntu is still the number one deployment out there. Whether you're talking about development proof of concepts or production, um, but what's kind of interesting for me is if you take CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise Linux and put them together, uh, because CentOS uh, really took uh, it, it Red Hat. Uh, I don't know if they bought CentOS. Really, uh, we we talked about it at Red Hat Summit. Um, they ki kind of. Uh, you know, hired some of the lead developers and, and are actively engaged in, in the piece of it, so I, I would put it under the Red Hat umbrella. If you combine those number two and number three operating systems, it's real close to being number one. Uh, from a storage standpoint, uh, you know, Ceph was number two on the list, and of course they bought Ink Tank recently, and, and Gluster's there. Uh, so, you know, Red Hat is positioning themselves, buying some of the pieces to position themselves in the ecosystem. Um, but, you know, if, you, if I look at those deployments, John, you know, out of 500, you know, it's split pretty evenly between uh, dev and QA, proof of concept, and production, 
And when I look at from six months ago, it, it's a similar mix of, of customer size, although we are starting to see at least some productions at scale. Uh, people have been questioning, uh, you know, when we get into that production, are, you know, are they all the kind of one to 100 cores? Uh, and there are some that are doing thousands of cores out there. So, you know, it is in production in some really large environments out there, which is a good proof point for the I ecosystem of OpenStack. You know, we had talked to the Ceph guys yesterday, Ink Tank, obviously we had the, uh, the founder on. That's a really big deal, and you combine that with um, Gluster, uh, Stu, what do you, what you make of that? It seems like a really good move. I mean, they're well positioned now with that. What's your take on that? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Uh, you know, Ceph has been, uh, you know, growing in importance in OpenStack and Red Hat's, you know, putting the wood behind the arrow to get into that space. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that'll be important. Um, just, just one more piece on the survey, which I think ties back to the Ink Tank piece. Um, most deployments are really on-premises. Out of the 506, uh, almost half of those are on-premise, and another, so 224 on-premise, another 65 are hosted private clouds. Uh, so, you know, public, um, you know, clouds are, are a minority of the deployments out there. Um, so, you know, as customers help build the tool sets that are going to, uh, you know, give them good economics to deploy these solutions, uh, you know, Ceph is in that mix, and, and, and it's a good tool that's been growing in popularity. You know, we have the comments out, come crowdchat.net slash OpenStack. So if you're watching this, go there. We have had a lot of folks on there. We had about 100 concurrents due on there, reading the text, so it's a great transcript. Uh, we're watching that feed and, and commenting there and recording that conversation with our new CrowdChat engagement app. Uh, it's a container, it's, it's fully active, it's across multiple social networks. So go to the CrowdChat and comment and, 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 and please weigh in. Stu, I got to talk about um, the, uh, the HP IBM presence here. I want to get your take, you know, and also, you know, you were also out last night with the blogger, so I also want to get your take on the big guys that are here. Obviously, the, the leadership is, is significant. Certainly the investment, HP, high quality uh, company, is certainly having a great event last night. Um, what's the impact of the big guys? And also, talk about the What's going on with the bloggers here? What, what's the state of the bloggers? All right, so, so, so to parse your question. So first for the big guys, definitely John, you know, I mean, Sar came on here and said there's 300 people from HP here. Um, my understanding, Rackspace has about 200 people here. You know, Red Hat, uh, you know, has a sizable number. Uh, I, I know it was over 100. Um, you know, C Cisco's got a decent sized contingency here. Uh, heck, even EMC, who doesn't have a booth, has 35 people uh, here, and uh, VMware has 30 people. So, you know, you start adding up uh, some of those big names uh, you know, on, on the list here, and you know, you've got, you know, it, it's got to be half of the people uh, that, that are at this show, John, out of the 4,600 are from those, uh, you know, big players out there. Um, get to the second part of your question, you know, you know the bloggers, um, you know, they, they've been tracking OpenStack for a while, it's an important part of the ecosystem, but you know, many of those are the, are, are the same guys that, you know, are writing about VMware, um, and you know, trying to parse uh, you know, what's happening on with VMware, wh where, where VMware's trying to lead uh, the discussion to cloud and what's happening here. Um, you know, a, a lot of us look at the, the big public clouds, what's happening with Amazon and the like. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think the bloggers, um, you know, are, are supportive of OpenStack and, uh, you know, th th that, that mix of the people that not only blog, but are also, you know, the developers and the coders, um, you know, they are definitely the ones that are bullish. So, I, you know, I have a few friends that, you know, are super users at this show. Um, some of them even have the, the posters showing, uh, you know, kind of their little caricatures. Um, and, you know, they, you know, are, are really behind this. Um, especially anybody that's been looking at DevOps over the last uh, few years. Um, you know, OpenStack, you know, is a solution that's helping to, you know, drive that whole adoption to DevOps, get rid of the silos, uh, and, you know, make IT a better place. So let's talk about the OpenStack deployments. What do you, what, what's your take on this and talking to the folks here and also we've had all the guests on. What's your take of the current build out status? What, what are these, quote, uh, new deployments look like? What are you seeing common threads uh, and common, uh, common deployments? Is low hanging fruit? What does the architecture look like? Can you share some color on what you're seeing? Yeah, so, so John, I, I think the service providers are where there is, you know, just an easy win because those, these are the companies um, that, you know, are, are growing at such a fast pace that they need to uh, adopt, you know, new technologies and new solutions and, and they're willing to take those risks, John. 
Um, we've had conversations with people that technology, um, you know, there are challenges, but that might be the easy part. Uh, so, you know, a, a service provider uh, can have new operational models and they can build out either a new data center or a new part of their data center with these new operational models. And, and that, that's what it takes is getting get yourself wrapped around that new mindset. Um, and while I can take some of my legacy hardware and layer OpenStack on top of it, it's a little tougher to do. So there need to be services and I need to get my people engaged on this. Uh, and, you know, I might not have the right skill set to do this. So, um, you know, I, I haven't heard, you know, a killer use case yet um, where we can say, hey, you know, if you've got this, you know, you, you've got to jump on it. Um, but, uh, you know, the, de definitely the service provider space is an area that, that's ripe for, uh, you know, leveraging this technology. So, Stu, this is day three of, of coverage. What have you learned so far in the first two days? So, John, we said many times, you know, there's momentum. If you really look at, you know, the, the ecosystem and all the players that have come on board, you know, OpenStack is, is, a, is a very important as to what's going on. Um, and, you know, it, you know, it is starting to transition into kind of usage and deployment. Uh, what we are starting to hear some early stories as to what people are using and, uh, you know, love documenting, uh, you know, the more information um, and getting more users that are talking about these deployments uh, so that they can learn from their peers. So, uh, learned a lot. Um, you know, I, I still have a dose of healthy skepticism as to, you know, what it's going to take to, you know, really bring OpenStack to the masses. Um, because for me today, it, it's not as simple or easy, um, because it's not just a product, John. It's still a, it's a lot of different projects that are in various states of deployment. Uh, you know, some of the basic things like, you know, the Cinder and Swift are in real good shapes. Things like networking, which we're going to dig into today. Uh, you know, Neutron, you know, needs, uh, a, you know, a little bit of work. Um, but, uh, you know, making a lot of progress and, uh, you know, the jockeying of all the horses on the track. Uh, and it's, uh, it's been, uh, been, been exciting. Well, Stu, this is day three. We're going to kick it off right now. We would not be here if it wasn't for Red Hat support and Brocade who have stepped up and sponsored the Cube and all the greatness we do. We work hard. We stay out late to get the stories. We work hard to interview as many people as we can to extract the signal from the noise. And it wouldn't be possible without the underwriting support of our, of our friends who support our mission to go out and extract that signal, go to the events, go where the action's happening, go where the bombs are dropping, where the hard ball is being played. Stu, we'll do whatever it takes. This is the Cube. I want to thank Brocade and Red Hat for that. This is uh, the Cube day three coverage. We'll be right back with our first guest right after this short break. <laughs>